Britain's newest aircraft carrier has crossed an invisible threshold in the Mediterranean, and almost no one at first glance will grasp how significant it is. With 24 UKF, 35B Lightning II jets packed onto the deck of HMS Prince of Wales for the Italian-led exercise Falcon Strike, the United Kingdom is no longer experimenting with fifth-generation air power at sea, it is wielding it at a scale that changes the strategic conversation across Europe and the wider NATO theatre. This concentration of British-owned stealth fighters on a single deck is a deliberate break from the past. Earlier deployments of the UK carrier force, including the 2021 crews of HMS Queen Elizabeth, relied on mixed British, US Marine Corps air groups to fill out the flight line. Now, the picture is different. Every F 35B embarked aboard Prince of Wales wears British markings, maintained by British crews and tasked under British command. It is a sovereign capability, not a coalition loan and it proves that London can independently generate massed, modern combat air power at sea. Behind the photographs of a crowded flight deck lies a demanding technical and organizational achievement. The Queen Elizabeth-class carriers were built to move large numbers of short takeoff and vertical landing jets in rapid cycles, but proving that with 24 sensitive fifth-generation aircraft requires more than design optimism. To field this many F-35 BS at sea, the UK Lightning Force has had to expand maintenance capacity, secure a resilient spares pipeline, train sufficient pilots and engineers, and harden its data systems to handle the security, connectivity needs and mission planning complexity of a modern stealth fleet. Exercise Falcon Strike turns that hard-won capacity into lived practice. British pilots are expected to fly complex day and night missions alongside Italian, US and Greek aircraft, using the F- 35 BS stealth profile, sensor fusion and secure data links in dense multi-domain scenarios. From Prince of Wales, strike packages can range across the Mediterranean, feeding targeting quality information into allied command networks, queuing surface warships, reinforcing land-based aviation and closing kill chains in minutes rather than hours. The carrier is no longer simply a mobile airfield, it is a roaming fusion center and launch platform for precision, networked effects. The scale of the embarked air wing fundamentally alters what a European-led carrier strike group can credibly threaten. Two dozen F-35BS, if surged, allow multiple tasks to run in parallel, defensive counter-air to screen the force, deep precision strikes ashore, maritime interdiction against hostile surface groups, and persistent intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance over strategic sea lanes. Instead of a token detachment designed to signal presence, the UK carrier strike group now carries enough jets to sustain pressure over time, absorb losses in a high-end scenario and still keep aircraft on task, an unmistakable message to any actor considering testing NATO on its southern arc. Set against the regional backdrop, the deployment stands out even more. Italy is advancing its own F- 35B integration and will soon expand operations from its carriers, but has not yet demonstrated this density of fifth-generation jets at sea. France fields a combat-proven carrier strike capability built around Rafale M, yet lacks an embarked stealth aircraft until its next-generation program matures. Spain faces a looming fast jet gap as its Harriers near retirement without a confirmed successor. In this environment, Prince of Wales emerges as a rare asset, a European deck hosting a concentrated formation of fifth-generation fighters, fully interoperable with U.S. forces yet not dependent on U.S. aircraft to deliver critical mass. Operation High Mast, the eight-month deployment framework under which this milestone occurs, adds another layer of strategic weight. The Carrier Strike Group has already pushed deep into the Indo-Pacific, exercised with partners across Asia, crossed contested choke points and then re-entered the Mediterranean still fully operational. Arriving with its maximum strength air wing embarked, escorts integrated, and crews sharpened by months at sea, the group demonstrates that a European nation can sustain global carrier operations without rotating into an extended stand-down before responding to crises closer to home. Interoperability inside Falcon Strike is where the concept becomes reality. Each sortie helps refine how British F 
F-35BS exchange data with Italian and U.S. F-35s, legacy fighters, airborne early warning platforms, submarines, and surface combatants. Shared logistics chains, common training standards and harmonized mission data files are slowly turning individual national F-35 fleets into a single, flexible community. Embarking 24 jets on Prince of Wales effectively stress tests that community at sea, communications resilience, electromagnetic discipline, data security and coalition decision-making are all pushed under realistic operational loads rather than scripted demonstrations. For NATO planners, seeing this many fifth-generation aircraft under a British flag at sea is both reassurance and leverage. It offers allies along the Mediterranean basin visible proof that European capabilities are catching up with political rhetoric, that a non-US carrier can bring stealth, persistence and meaningful striking power into theater at short notice. At the same time, it frees American carriers to prioritize other regions, confident that a credible fifth-generation option already operates in the Met. That redistribution of responsibility, however subtle, shifts NATO's posture toward a more genuinely shared burden in deterring adversaries and protecting vital sea lines of communication. Ultimately, the sight of Prince of Wales conducting intense flight operations with her deck crowded by lightnings is less about breaking a numerical record and more about demonstrating credibility. Carrier programs are judged not by glossy renders or ceremonial sailings, but by whether they can put ready jets into the sky, day after day, alongside allies, in conditions that mirror conflict rather than parade ground calm. By embarking 24 British F-35 BS, integrating them into a demanding multinational exercise and doing so at the closing phase of a long-range deployment, the United Kingdom is making a clear statement, its investment in carriers and fifth-generation aviation has matured into a usable, scalable instrument of power that adversaries must now factor into any serious calculation. For potential adversaries watching from a distance, that statement is edged with risk. A single European carrier able to host this many stealth fighters complicates any strategy built on limited, fast-moving provocations or coercive naval maneuvers kept below the threshold of expected NATO response. A Prince of Wales-based air wing can appear offshore with minimal warning, operate at reach, fuse inputs from multiple domains and deliver precise, hard to attribute blows while remaining difficult to target in return. That element of uncertainty is now sailing the Mediterranean, not just a larger air wing, but a mobile pocket of ambiguity and deterrence that quietly raises the cost of miscalculation wherever the UK carrier strike group chooses to go.